The content here is for informational purposes only, should not be taken as legal, business, tax, or investment advice, or be used to evaluate any investment or security and does not constitute a solicitation to enter into an investment agreement with BOS. For more details, please see bosinvest.com slash disclosures. Hi, and welcome to BOS Perspectives Podcast. I'm David Newsom. Today is Monday, April 27th, 2020, and today's episode is about steps to take after the death of a loved one and was written by BOS estate planning advisor, Judith Gordon. What do I do now is often the first question asked when a parent, spouse, child, or a close friend or relative passes away. My best advice is when that time does come, close your eyes, breathe, and take the time you need for your memories. Stay in touch with your own feelings and well-being. Few people can think with total clarity on all fronts when a loved one dies, and it is easy to become distracted and endanger yourself or others. As an example, falls or other accidents can occur. Other than immediate tasks involving the body of the deceased and pending transactions such as a real estate closing or other financial emergency, most tasks related to someone's death do not require immediate action. However, for some, focusing on putting a decedent's affairs in order can provide an opportunity to think about other things, and the work may provide emotional relief. For others, focusing on an estate administration can wait until one is emotionally ready to tackle the tasks. The following information is a checklist of many of the tasks that need to be handled after a person passes away. Ultimately, What needs to be done and how long it will take to deal with each task depends on an individual situation. The following information is not a substitute for sound professional advice. Number one, call 911, family members, and a funeral director. If there is an unexpected death at home, call 911. If the deceased was under hospice care, notify hospice. Contact immediate family to comfort one another and share information about important decisions. You may encourage them to spread the word so you have more time to attend to other matters. Look for any written instructions for funeral or memorial services and burial or cremation arrangements. Many people name a designated agent in an advance health care directive to take care of these arrangements. Also, Look for any records of the deceased person's desire to donate organs. Two sources to check are the decedent's driver's license and their advance health care directive. Contact a funeral director. An experienced funeral director can help with a variety of services beyond the obvious ones, including making transportation arrangements if the death was in another city, cremation, notifying government agencies, obituaries, and ordering death certificates. Number two, secure property. Lock up the person's home and vehicle and make sure their car is parked in a secure and legal area. If the home will be empty, you may wish to notify a neighbor or the police. If there are pets, arrange for someone to care for the animal until a permanent arrangement can be made. Number three, funeral or memorial services. Enlist help for the important decisions if needed. Arrange for someone to remain at the decedent's home during the funeral service. Sadly, many people have come home to find that the deceased home has been robbed while everyone was attending the funeral. Prepare an obituary and arrange for publication in appropriate newspapers or online. If the deceased left an ethical will or letters written to family members, not legal documents, then share as appropriate. Notify the post office and provide a forwarding address for mail so that accumulated mail does not draw attention. Mail may also be a source of useful information. Cancel newspaper subscriptions so papers do not stack up. Number four, ordering death certificates. The funeral director or hospice can assist with ordering death certificates. It is usually unclear how many certified death certificates will be needed, but 10 to 12 will generally suffice. A copy of a certified death certificate can often be used to accomplish some tasks. If needed, you can always order additional certified copies from the county clerk's office. Number five, collect and secure pertinent documents and inspect safe deposit box. 
Inspect the decedent's safe deposit box for important documents and valuables. The rules regarding access to a decedent's safe deposit box can be tricky and may vary from institution to institution. If there is a possibility of disputes among family members, it may be wise to have a bank personnel or disinterested third party present when the box is opened. A written inventory should be prepared at that time to document the contents of the box. Some important documents to locate are original will and any codicils, copies of bank account statements for month including date of death, copies of brokerage account statements for month including date of death, copies of any securities or stock options that are not included in the brokerage statements, copies of any promissory notes receivable and the balance due at date of death, copy of the deed to the residence and the deeds to any other real property owned, ownership certificates for any automobiles, copies of IRA and 401k account statements for month including date of death, life insurance policies on the decedent's life or on the surviving spouse's life, list of any other assets of any type owned, copies of any trusts of which the decedent was a beneficiary, list of payments made for household bills, etc. for the two months after death, mortgage statements for month including date of death, real property tax bill for the current tax year, names, addresses, and dates of birth of the decedent's children, social security numbers for the surviving spouse and children, location of any safe deposit box, copies of income tax returns for the last two years. Number six, consult a lawyer even if you do not engage their services. If at all possible, contact the attorney who prepared the decedent's will or trust to make certain that you have copies of any documents the attorney had in his or her files. Advice from a qualified professional can often save estate money, make the process of settling the estate easier, and help family members avoid potential liabilities. Even if matters appear straightforward, there are tasks that are required that may not be apparent. For example, Probate Code Section 8200A requires that the person in possession of the will lodge the will with the clerk of the superior court in the county in which the decedent resided within 30 days of learning of the death unless a petition for probate has already been filed. The will must be lodged even if there is not going to be a probate because the decedent had a fully funded trust. If the decedent had a trust, a notification by trustee must be sent to heirs and beneficiaries notifying them of the death and their right to receive a copy of the trust. You will also want to consider retaining the services of an accountant. There will be final income tax returns to prepare, post-death fiduciary income tax returns, and depending on the size of the estate and personal circumstances, an estate tax return may also need to be prepared. Number seven, notify government agencies and insurance companies. Typically, the funeral director notifies Social Security that a person has died, but it is always a good idea to double-check. If benefits are being received, overpayments can be complicated. If a payment was received for the month of death, the payment may need to be returned. If the deceased has a surviving spouse or dependents, you will want to inquire about changes to benefits. If Medicare benefits are involved, Social Security will inform Medicare. Notify the health insurance company or the deceased's employer to discontinue coverage. Terminate other types of insurance, such as automobile or umbrella policies, if appropriate, and obtain appropriate refund of premiums paid. Number eight, apply for death benefits. It is not much, but Social Security provides a surviving spouse a one-time $255 death benefit. Social Security can also put the deceased person on the Social Security Master Death Index to prevent fraudsters from collecting a dead person's Social Security payments. Determine the beneficiaries of retirement accounts and take time to understand the best methods to take distributions from these accounts. There are different income tax implications, so a thoughtful analysis is important. Locate any life insurance policies and complete the necessary forms. Each insurance company will have their own requirements for payment of death benefits. Number nine, cancel accounts, memberships, and subscriptions. It may take some detective work, but following someone's death, 
cancel subscriptions, memberships, or other services that will no longer be used. Number 10. Pay recurring bills and terminate automatic payments. Pay regularly recurring bills such as car payments and utility bills. Terminate automatic payments as soon as possible and have paper bills mailed to an appropriate address. As a person's house is closed down, utilities can be canceled. Number 11. Deal with digital assets. Locate the decedent's passwords and digital data on computers, tablets, and smartphones and deal with each as appropriate. Digital data will include photos, videos, music, emails, and social media accounts. Please feel free to contact your BOS Wealth Management team for further assistance in helping you with your loved one's estate administration.